So um, make sure in, in patients with chronic hyponatremia, again, I, I emphasized in patients with chronic hyponatremia, it should not exceed eight to 10. And the, some books would say only eight milliequivalents in that 24 hour period. And in patients like, for example, I just told you the risk factors now, in these kind of, if someone who has all these risk factors will be even more careful. Huh? And then the goal would be even less in like, say a five milliequivalents, suppose the sodium is 115, you would, you would normally you would try to bring it up to 125 in 24 hours. But in, when, whenever the risk factors are there, you should be even more careful, try to bring it up to 120. Once the sodium goes up to 120 in general, the, um, the, the, ch the chances of neurological problems decrease. So the symptoms get better. Um, okay. So treatment again um, depends on the underlying cause. Uh, in a patient with hypovolemia, secondary to, for example, gastroenteritis or diarrhea, you would give normal saline. In a patient with SIDH, where the problem is with water retention, you would give, um, well, you would restrict fluids. Uh, you'll, may, you'll, you'll ask the patient to, for example, drink only one liter of fluid the whole day. Right, you would give them that bottle, bisleri water bottle, and say, "Okay, you drink. You are supposed to drink only this much of water the whole day." I know it's difficult for some of the patients, but you have to restrict water in these patients. If it's at least, if not thousand ml, at least initially twelve hundred or fifteen hundred ml in in patients with less severe hyponatremia, and and it also helps if they if they're able to drink, you know, for example, coconut coconut water or ORS rather than plain water. And you, would, and you would remove the precipitating drug. If the patient is on some antidepressant, for example, sertraline, or a patient is on hydrochlorothiazide, or um, patient is on some antiepileptic like carbamazepine, you would, you would stop all those drugs, right? You, you can't imagine how often we see patients, hyponatremic patients on, on, this, uh, on these drugs. So at least, mm -hmm. at least uh, seven to eight out of 10 patients are due to this antihypertensive drugs like hydrochlorothiazide. I'm talking about mild hyponatremia. Demeclocycline, which is a derivative of tetracycline is also found to help, but uh, I've never used it and it's not, not, not used so often, I should say. This is something, oral urea is something which has come up recently, um, not, not in regular use. What we do use, what we use on a frequent basis in a patient with moderate to severe hyponatremia is vasopressin antagonist, right? especially in uolemic and hypervolemic hyponatremia, like conivaptan and tolvaptan. Conivaptan is, um, is an intravenous preparation, um, but most of the times we use tolvaptan, right? It comes in 15 mg uh, tablets. You can give once a day, right? Um, so, and most important thing is don't use these in patients with hypovolemic hyponatremia. Someone is having diarrhea uh, due to gastroenteritis, you don't want to give tolvaptan. What they need is, IV fluids, but you can use these in patients with SIDH, that is uovolemic hyponatremia or hypervolemic hyponatremia. Then what about patients with CHF? You can't use saline to them, can you? So you cannot give normal saline and avoid 3% saline also, unless they're having seizures, right? So uh, hypervolemic hyponatremia, the, I told you the, the, the problem is retention of both sodium as well as water, right? So, uh, you would use diuretics like furosemide. Huh? Uh, furosemide, and you can also use tolvaptan in these patients. And very rarely, they, they don't work, if they don't work enough, then they, then they may have to go for dialysis, right? So, you know, ADH acts on the uh, collecting tubule to increase water reabsorption, isn't it? So, um, tolvaptan would impair this function causing water diuresis. It gets rid of water, right? So um, that's why it should not be used in hypovolemic hyponatremia, it, it can, but it can be used in SIDH, it can be used in cirrhosis, CHF, chronic liver disease. It should not be used for many months together. It, like it, used to be, it has to be used for a limited period of time and, it, and make sure you don't use it in, you monitor LFT. Um, and um, this is like most of the times we do both, okay? Waptans and fluid restriction, most of the times we should do both. But for someone whose sodium is correcting very rapidly, then you back off a little bit.